We bid you good evening on this 27th Sunday in Ordinary Time. We welcome you, you the people of God. Our celebrant this evening is our pastor, Father Chris Schaffner. And uh, this week we celebrated yesterday, in fact, the Feast of St. Francis of Assisi. And so some of our pre-mass music was dedicated to him, along with some of our music during the service. So if you turn to number 547 and find all creatures of our God and King, and please rise and join us. Lift up your voices, let us sing. All 
Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My friends, as we prepare ourselves to enter into these sacred mysteries of Jesus Christ, let us begin by calling to mind our sins, asking God for his pardon and mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glory. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son. Lord God, Lamb. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone. Jesus Christ, 
Almighty, ever-living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpass the merits and the desires of those who entreat you, pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayer does not dare to ask. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord God said, It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a suitable partner for him. So the Lord God formed out of the ground various wild animals and various birds of the air, and he brought them to the man to see what he would call them. Whatever the man called each of them would be its name. The man gave names to all the cattle, all the birds of the air, and all wild animals, but none proved to be the suitable partner for the man. So the Lord God cast a deep sleep on the man, and while he was asleep, he took out one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. The Lord God then built up into a woman the rib that he had taken from the man. When he brought her to the man, the man said, This one, at last, is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. This one shall be called woman, for out of her man this one has been taken. That is why a man leaves his father and mother and clings to his wife, and the two of them become one flesh. The word of the Lord. May the Lord bless us all the days of our shall you be and favor. May the Lord bless us all the days of our lives. Your wife shall be like a fruitful vine in the recesses of your home. Your children like olive plants around your table. May the Lord bless us all the days of our lives. Behold, thus is the man blessed who fears the Lord. The Lord bless you from Zion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. May the Lord bless us all the days of our lives. May you see your children's children. Peace be upon Israel. May the Lord bless A 
reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, he for a little while was made lower than the angels, that by the grace of God he might taste death for everyone. For it was fitting that he, for whom and through whom all things exist, in bringing many children to glory, should make the leader to their salvation perfect through suffering. He who consecrates and those who are being consecrated all have one origin. Therefore, he is not ashamed to call them brothers. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The Pharisees approached Jesus and asked, is it lawful for a husband to divorce his wife? They were testing him. He said to them in reply, what did Moses command you? They replied, Moses permitted a husband to write a bill of divorce and dismiss her. But Jesus told them, because of the hardness of your hearts, he wrote you this commandment. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, no human being must separate. In the house, the disciples again questioned Jesus about this. He said to them, Whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. And people were bringing children to him that he might touch them. But the disciples rebuked him. When Jesus saw this, he became indignant and said to them, Let the children come to me. Do not prevent them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Amen, I say to you, whoever does not accept the kingdom of God like a child will not enter it. Then he embraced them and blessed them, placing his hands on them. The Gospel of the Lord. So years ago, probably about 25 years ago, I began uh, the great journey uh, of uh, charting out my family history, uh, my genealogy. And uh, I'm the, the family historian in that sense in, in my family, and I, I laid out uh, all the research, and we go back generations and generations. Uh, and I could probably tell you a few interesting stories uh, in our family tree. Uh, but, but one of the most interesting things uh, about doing that kind of research uh, is when you can actually get uh, real pictures uh, of the people uh, from the past. You know, not just grandparents, but great-grandparents, great-great-grandparents even. And it's so exciting. And, and I, I uh, remember how excited I was when my mom, years ago when I was uh, in seminary, she uh, gave us, uh, me and my brothers, uh, you know, a portion of the old pictures that, that she had uh, stored away. And, and I still have those pictures, and uh, they, they have a lot of pictures from her youth, you know, her, her parents, her grandparents. Uh, aunts and uncles and cousins, people I, I know the names of, but I never had put a face to. And so I was pouring through these pictures, and, and something struck me 
uh, when I was looking at the pictures. Because I was looking at all these pictures, I was like, Mom, you know, you were, you were a beautiful woman growing up, and you still are beautiful, of course, I would tell her. And, uh, and uh, she's like, you flatter me. I'm like, yes, well, you're my mom. So, uh, so but uh, I noticed that, that she didn't have any wedding photos uh, in the batch. And, and so I went to her and I said, Mom, do you have any pictures of your wedding? And she said, no. And that kind of was like, you know, raised an eyebrow for me. I'm like, Mom, is there something you want to tell me? Uh, and she said, yes. She, she actually said that the, the priest at the time that, that married her and my dad didn't allow her to take photos at their wedding. Uh, because she, she lived in a, in a town in uh, the early 70s. Uh, it was 1971 when she got married. Uh, and uh, she had married a Baptist man. My dad was Baptist. And that priest was very strict about that. He, he, said, he said, okay, I'll marry you, uh, but it won't be a big ceremony. It'll just be a simple thing on like a Tuesday morning uh, and no pictures. And, and I was kind of disappointed when I heard that story because I was like, I don't have a picture of my mom in her wedding dress. And I don't have a picture of my dad uh, in his suit. Uh, but, you know, it, there was something about that that as I think about it, I, I, I begin to ask myself, well, well, Mom, why would you want to get married in the church if you don't have, uh, you know, a memento of this? And, and I think, you know, my mom would answer much like uh, any other couple might when they come to get married by the church. You know, to say, like, why do you want to get married in the church? And, and I think, you know, probably one of the first answers we might give is say, you know, it's, it's tradition. You know, we're Catholic, that's what we do. Uh, or we might say, well, uh, we want our marriage blessed by God. And, and I think those are, are wonderful answers. But I think, you know, as, as my mom began to think about it, it it's, the, the truth ran much deeper because she recognized something sacred about the marriage bond. You know, the, the outpouring of grace into her life, into uh, my dad's life, uh, that would bless them throughout their years of marriage. And, and I think this, this is so, so fitting uh, today as we hear uh, the scriptures speak about marriage. It highlights uh, the beauty of, of the grace that is bestowed upon husband and wife. And over the years, over the last 19 years, I, I probably have worked with probably about 250 couples and have counseled many of them uh, through uh, the course of preparation. And even looking out today, I can see at least a couple people where, where I have actually sat down with them and, and done that very thing. And the beauty of, of this sacrament uh, is that it goes all the way back to the very beginning. You know, the, the first reading today from the book of Genesis uh, talks about the first married couple, Adam and Eve. And uh, their relationship uh, forms the very foundation of our understanding of Christian marriage. You know, so when you go back to the beginning, you know the story of creation, how on the, the end of the sixth day, God created the man out of the dust of the earth. And he blew into his nostrils the very breath of life, giving him uh, a living, breathing soul. And as uh, this man was walking around uh, the garden, he, he was noticing something. He realized that he was alone because that he did not have a partner. Uh, and so there's something about that uh, within us as human beings. It makes us sorrowful because we know that as human beings, we are called to relationship. We are called to communion with others, whether it's in a marriage or in a family or in a friendship or in some kind of community. And so God looked upon that and he had compassion on the man. He said, it is not good that man be alone. So I will make him a suitable partner. And so he put the man to sleep and he took out his rib and he built the woman from that. And then he brought that woman, Eve, to the man. He woke him up and uh, the man took one look at that woman. He said, bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. This one at last. And, and I love that moment uh, that we hear about in the scriptures because it's this moment of, of uh, uh, recognition that uh, Adam could look at Eve and see into her very heart and soul and know her completely. And in a sense, when he said those words, it was almost like the vows that we say at, at a, a wedding ceremony. To say, I recognize that you were created for me and I was created for you and I want to give myself to you completely. And we would say, Eve would, would have said uh, the same thing at the time. 
And it was in that moment uh, when they made that recognition, when they made that commitment, that free choice to give themselves to the other, that God blessed and sealed that bond. We call that union in the church. And this is, this is a bond that doesn't come about just because uh, we, we live under the same roof or it doesn't come because we share uh, a bed or share a bank account or anything like that. It's because uh, in the union of husband and wife, in the sacrament of marriage, there is a real union taking place to become one flesh. It's a union of body, mind, and heart, and soul. And it's a beautiful thing. And, and then, you know, you, you follow the story of Adam and Eve, and at this moment, uh, God gives them uh, the first command he gives to any human person, and he says, be fruitful and multiply. You know, have children. Children then become this very visible sign of the love between husband and wife. And as they raise up those children, uh, those children become uh, a, a very manifest uh, sign to the world that, that love brought that child into being. You know, this is uh, the very essence, the very end, the very purpose of marriage, union and procreation. Not that every encounter that a husband and wife have uh, would end uh, in, in a child, but that they'd be open to it for sure. You know, uh, now, even beyond that, what we find in the scriptures is, is that marriage is, is not just this simple agreement between a husband and wife. It's a covenant relationship. It's this sacred bond that is unbreakable until death do us part. And this goes all the way back uh, to special uh, similar covenants made between God and his people and between Christ and his church. You know, probably one of the, the most uh, poignant ones is the story of Moses. When he goes up on the mountain and he receives the Ten Commandments on behalf of the people, you know, God says, I will be your God, and I will never abandon you. I will be there to guide you. I will be there uh, to uh, foster you uh, in your, your faith and your hope and your love. I will never leave you. And Moses says, then we will be your people, God, and we will never abandon you. And so and they enter into this covenant relationship. It's very similar to how Christ uh, and the church are, that we enter into a relationship with Christ where Christ says, I am never going to leave you. I'm with you forever until the very end of time. And we say, Jesus, we will follow you. But I think what happens often, and this happens uh, in those covenant relationships that we find in Scripture, and we find it in marriage as well, is that we don't always live up to the vows that we make. You know, sometimes we say the wrong thing. Sometimes we do the wrong thing. Sometimes we hurt our spouse with the words and the actions that we do. But God is the model for every married couple to remain faithful in that relationship, you know, to remain firm that, that even should uh, the other one stray, and even if we should be the one that stray, that the covenant is there to draw us back into uh, a, a healthier relationship to forgive, to reconcile. It, it helps to restore because we've made that vow. We remind ourselves always of that vow. You know, now, I, I know, you know there are many couples who have been married for years, you know, many for decades, and uh, they have built a life together. They have... Uh, raised children together, perhaps have seen grandchildren, maybe perhaps even great-grandchildren, and they've navigated all the challenges, the ups and downs of, of life. You know, in fact, you know, just this afternoon, I, I blessed a couple that had been married for 70 years this last week, and it's a beautiful thing. But I also know that, that, that among many of those couples are those that, uh, even though they are completely dedicated to one another, they have yet to have their marriage blessed by the church. To have it validated is the word we use to basically be recognized as a sacrament of the church. And, and this is not meant uh, as any kind of criticism. It's not meant as a, as a judgment. It's, it's an observation. Uh, but certainly as a spiritual father as I am, you know, it, it is an, it's an invitation 
to come forth to receive that outpouring of grace that comes with the sacrament of holy matrimony. And I think for, for many couples who have been living, you know, uh, marriage, they may perhaps not as a sacrament. They may say, well, well, what does this look like for me? And how does this help me? How does the grace of the sacrament uh, help me in any, different, any way different than the way we've been living our lives so far? And I think there's, there's four things. You know, the first is that it's a true union of body, mind, soul, and spirit. Again, we go back to the scriptures. What Jesus says is absolutely true. Two become one. And that actually happens. It's a union of mind and heart and soul and spirit that each day you are committed uh, to trying to practice more and more. And then second, you know, the grace of this sacrament, it gives you strength. It gives you strength to navigate all the ups and downs of, of life. Because we know marriage, if you are a married couple, you know it's hard. You know there are times that uh, you just want to, like, you know, go off into the other room and be by yourself. You just want some time away from your spouse, perhaps. But, but the strength given to us in, in this sacrament uh, allows us to say, I am willing to do whatever it takes to strengthen this relationship, to strengthen this marriage. Maybe it means I need to learn how to forgive or to ask forgiveness, or to persevere in the face of hardship. The third thing is, is that uh, this is uh, a declaration uh, of a very powerful and lifelong commitment. You know, no doubt any couple that enters into any sort of marriage, there is a sort of commitment there. But to actually enter into the grace-filled sacrament is to say, this is for life. And no matter what may happen, good times and in bad, sickness and health, for rich or for poor, I'm in it for life. And no matter what may happen, we are going to work it out together. And then fourth is that the grace of this sacrament uh, is, is a wonderful way to celebrate the journey that a couple has been on in their married life to that point. And it's a way to kind of look back over the years and, and celebrate uh, all the good things that God has done, but then to kind of renew that purpose and say, now, God, you get to uh, instill your grace on us so that we can expect even better things in the years to come. You know, this is the grace of the sacrament. And if you are a couple, you know, that uh, has not yet had your marriage blessed in the church, I invite you to have a conversation, you know, to, to ask, you know, what might it look like uh, to have the grace of the sacrament enter into your lives? Because when it comes down to it, marriage, it's a gift. It's a gift to husband and wife. It's a gift to the church. It's a gift to the world. And when you step forward and you ask God to bless your marriage in that way, a good marriage becomes great. And a great marriage becomes extraordinary. And an extraordinary marriage becomes a true witness to the world. And today, I, I want to celebrate marriage in all of its forms and you know, pray for, for those uh, husbands and wives uh, who are, are married. Pray for those who are struggling, perhaps, in their marriage. Pray for those who are discerning marriage, that, that God may increase their love for one another and increase their dedication and their faithfulness to God. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. 
and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now, my friends, let us turn to our Father in heaven with our needs and the needs of all the world. For Pope Francis, all bishops, priests, deacons, and all who hold and teach the Catholic faith, may they be anointed by the Holy Spirit to be faithful prophets and speak the gospel truth without fear or shame. We pray to the Lord. Amen. For all public officials, that the Holy Spirit would inspire them to enact laws that defend and promote the right to life of all human beings, especially those not yet born. We pray to the Lord. Lord for all married couples, for engaged couples, for couples who are dating or discerning marriage, may they be moved by their love for God and for one another to live out their vocation faithfully as witnesses to the world. We pray to the Lord. For all families, that the home may be a place where the love of Christ is deeply rooted in their hearts and where children find an example of how to live out the call to holiness in their daily lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord For our parish and school community of St. Anne's, may our worship of God in the Holy Mass unite us in a bond of deeper faith, hope, and love. We pray to the Lord. For the souls of the faithful, de faithful departed, especially Albert and O'Donna Kubis and Anna Stubbs, may they know the mercy of God and rise with him to new and eternal life. We pray to the Lord. God, almighty Father in heaven, you are the giver of all good gifts. Hear these prayers and those that remain in the silence of our hearts and answer them all in accord with your most holy will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. This time, any little ones among us who have an offering to make, you're invited to come forward to place it in the basket at the foot of the altar. As the gifts are prepared, please join us in the hymn, One Love Released, number 333.
sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by your commands, and through the sacred mysteries which we celebrate with dutiful service, graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And with your Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so, with all the angels, we praise you. As in joyful celebration, we acclaim. of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, 
all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Story of faith. When we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, his assistants, Joseph and Michael, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. 
and let us now offer each other the sign of peace. Behold, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Love alone. 
Let us pray. And grant us, Almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received, so as to be transformed into what we consume. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. So please mark your calendars for next weekend, uh, weather permitting, October 12th and 13th. Uh, it will be a cookie and donut weekend uh, hosted by our stewardship committee. Uh, weather permitting, we'll right after Mass, after our Saturday Mass, we'll have cookies out uh, in the parking lot. And after our Masses on Sunday morning, we'll have donuts. Uh, great way to enjoy a little treat as well as to connect with others in a spirit of fellowship. So I hope that you will remember to, to join us and, and spend a few moments with us after Mass. Again, that's next weekend, 12th and 13th of October. Uh, and then an invitation to join us for St. Anne's fifth annual gala event. It's fast approaching at the end of this month on Friday, October 25th, uh, 5.30 to 11 p.m. Uh, over at the Scenic Skate Barn in uh, Henderson. Uh, social time, a dinner, followed by a dance. Uh, the theme is a speak easy, a 1920s theme. Uh, so come uh, all costumed up and uh, ready to have a, a fun night. Uh, there is a table set up in the entrance of the church with information on the meal, on the cost, and how to purchase your tickets. Uh, you can also uh, find that information in the bulletin today. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to call any of our committee members. Those are listed uh, in the bulletin, uh, as, or you can give us a call at the parish office, and we will direct you to the right answers that you might have. 
As we conclude our Mass then today, let us offer our prayer together to the Blessed Virgin as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth. The Mass is ended. And please join us for our final hymn, number 611, Let All Things Now Live. <laughs> Thanksgiving. 